Hello children. Today we will learn about our environment. As you know, a living organism cannot live by itself. Organisms interact among themselves and also with non-living surroundings. The living organisms are called biotic factors whereas the non-living surroundings are called abiotic factors. Biotic factors include plants, animals and all the microbes whereas abiotic factors include non-living surroundings like air, water, land, temperature, humidity, etc. We need the association of living and non-living surroundings. So, it is our duty to protect the environment. Environmental pollution is defined as any undesirable change in physical, chemical and biological characteristics of air, land and water. Pollution can be natural or man-made. The agents or substances that cause pollution are known as pollutants. Pollutants are generally classified into two main groups, biodegradable and non-biodegradable. Pollutants that can be broken down into simpler compounds by the action of microbes are known as biodegradable pollutants. For example, wood, paper, agricultural waste, kitchen waste, etc. Pollutants that cannot be broken down by the action of microbes into simpler compounds are known as non-biodegradable pollutants. For example, pesticides, DDT, plastics, aluminium foil, etc. Pollution can be classified according to the components of biosphere. Even noise can cause pollution. Depending on the severity, it shows many effects on our body, ranging from headache to heart attack. Natural sources of air pollution are forest fires, dust storms, volcanoes and decaying organic matter. Other causes of air pollution are deforestation, urbanization and industrialization. Automobiles and burning of fuels like petrol, diesel, kerosene, wood, etc., also lead to air pollution. Diseases caused by air pollution are asthma, lung cancer, bronchitis, etc. As controlling air pollution is nearly an impossible task, we can at least reduce air pollution to some extent by following some very simple habits. They are as follows. We can go to school by cycle if it is possible and avoid cars. Carpooling also helps in controlling air pollution. Use public transport. We can carry more people to reduce the number of vehicles on the road. Use tall chimneys in factories to avoid smoke. Avoid sudden acceleration and sudden braking while driving a vehicle. Do not burn any waste material, especially plastics. Factories, power plants and oil wells discharge their pollutants directly into the water bodies. These pollutants come from various sources and are dumped into the water. Factory sources can be controlled easily because these are coming from one source. Pollutants or effluents must be treated before these are dumped into the water bodies. 40% of our municipal garbage is made up of kitchen and garden waste. Diseases caused by polluted water are typhoid, cholera, dysentery, jaundice, etc. Do you know? 5th June is celebrated as World Environment Day. Amazing fact! 40% of our municipal garbage is made up of kitchen and garden wastes. Dumping of garbage, plastics and other wastes in the open places pollutes the soil. Excessive use of chemicals such as pesticides, insecticides and fertilizers also pollute the soil. We should throw the waste materials only in dustbins. We should reduce the use of plastics and chemicals which pollute the soil. Items or things which we do not need and discard are called waste. Waste can be solid or liquid. Any garbage, refuse or rubbish that we generate in our homes and other places is solid waste. Solid waste includes old newspapers, plastic bottles, food waste and broken furniture. Liquid waste includes wash water from homes, liquids used for cleaning in industries and waste detergent solutions. Sewage or drainage pipes are used to remove liquid wastes from houses and industries. 
an open drainage system is a health hazard because mosquitoes breed in an open drain and cause diseases like malaria and dengue waste management means the collection transport processing or disposal managing and monitoring of waste materials to minimize its consequences on humans and environment recycling recycling means processing the used materials into new or useful products this is done to reduce the use of raw materials that would have been used it also uses less energy and is a significant way of controlling air water and land pollution reusing many household items can be reused for example carry bags envelopes jars old clothes all can be used for useful purposes carry bags can be used again for shopping jars can be cleaned and used for storage scrap paper can be used to make notes and sketches storage we can reduce the spoilage of food by keeping or storing them properly we can store vegetables fruits and cooked items in refrigerator dry items like pulses and flour can be stored in clean and dry containers composting bacteria fungi worms and organisms can decompose organic waste such as food and plant materials decayed organic matter is rich in humus and called compost composting is of two kinds bin composting and vermi composting bin composting can be done in households we can take a box or a pot with holes put organic and food waste in layers separating them with layers of soil mix and add some water after every 7 days leave the pot for a month and thereafter the compost will be ready vermi composting is the process of composting in which earthworms are used for decaying waste the earth is wrapped in a blanket of air called the atmosphere which is made up of several layers of gases the rays of the sun warm the earth and heat of the earth travels back into the atmosphere some gases in the atmosphere stop some of the heat from escaping into space these gases are called greenhouse gases water vapors carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and ozone and the natural process between the sun the atmosphere and the earth is called the greenhouse effect it is called a greenhouse effect because it works in the same way as greenhouse works in keeping the sun's heat inside for saplings greenhouse effect causes earth to warm up and melt the snow covered mountains which results in changes in seasons and warming up of the earth this is called global warming biogas is a gas produced by the breakdown of organic matter in the absence of oxygen it is a renewable energy source like solar and wind energy Biogas is mainly produced from a mixture of cow and buffalo dung. Crop remains can be mixed with the cattle dung to produce biogas. The waste is decomposed in a closed pit or container to produce it. Methane gas is the main component of biogas. It is also used to cook food. It provides a non-polluting and renewable source of energy. It is an efficient way of energy conversion. it leads to improvement in the environment sanitation and hygiene it is a cheap source of fuel household waste and bio waste can be disposed usefully in a healthy manner let us summarize our environment is made up of biotic and abiotic factors pollutants are mainly classified into biodegradable and non biodegradable the three types of pollution are air water and land pollution air pollutants are of two types gaseous and particulate soil pollution is the easiest way to control by being a little more careful waste can be solid or liquid greenhouse gases cause global warming biogas is a gas produced by the breakdown of organic matter in the absence of oxygen